we live in a uh, predominantly patriarchal society. How did that happen? Tonight, I'm going to give you a little bit of history about that. I believe that to move into the future, what we have to do to make mankind better is we have to learn as men and women to work together. We have to learn that women have so much to offer to, ba to balance this crazy out of world that is out of sync so badly. And I'll suggest to you tonight that patriarchy and matriarchy is not the way to go. What we need to do is we need to look at a system that's integrated. Egalitarianism. Equanimity. is taking the best from both. The two heads are better than one. Patriarchy is detrimental to our society. And we need to be inclusive of women. And we need to treat women and men as equals. The history of denigrating women needs to be passed on. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, of course, are guests. The term patriarchy is used loosely as a standard for male domination. With the literal interpretation, the rule of the father. Now, did you catch that? That's a male word, domination. Matriarchy is a system of society, of government ruled by a woman. Did you catch that? That's a female phrase, ruled by. Why do we always refer to the earth as Mother Earth? And then when it comes time for the older ones of us, we know that hurricanes were always named after women. There's something wrong with how we do this. Why is it that we can never just let women be equal with men? Patriarchy is the result of psychological constructions that are passed down from generation to generation. Modern day developed societies have developed gender inequities because they're conveyed by the family, mass media, and other institutions that largely fail male dominant or largely favor male domination. The evolution of science in patriarchal societies tends to really put the male testosterone hormone in a very important place because guys like to go out and risk things. And somehow or another, as long as they fail and they win sometimes, we think that that's a really valuable attribute. But that's not really true because perceived biological perceptions that we have, such as a woman's brain is smaller, so they're not as smart, as we know that this is not true. We have the MRI now that tells us that women are equal to men. So... Uh, we go back to 3100 BC. Males had already started dominating women. And what they did is they took on a woman's reproductive capacity. And they were excluded from the process of the construction of history. Which in other words, well, we just don't want, we won't include them. Anything they've got to say isn't worth it. With the appearance of the Hebrews, all of a sudden women are out of the God humanity situation too. And now we're in a situation where most people in the world, if they're spiritual, they believe that God or whatever it is, is a spirit rather than a man or a woman. And it's a, it's a really important thing to remember, but if we go back to 8000 BC to 2500 BC, it's all female. It's all female goddesses. And somehow or another, what's happened is the human species has uh, decided that that's not the way they want to go. Now, some good reading is by a gentleman named Leonard Schlein, who wrote a book called The Alphabet Versus the Goddess. And he talks about the cradle of civilization, which is Greece, uh, Egypt, China. And he states that deities were most popularly female. And what happened is by the 5th century AD, they were completely gone. We became a male-dominated society. And all of a sudden, women were even per, uh, were, were prohibited from conducting any ceremonies within a religious rite. So the effect of literacy has changed what happened. It has, writing subliminally fosters a patriarchal society. It's not image-based, it's very alphabetic. So writing of any kind, especially in an alphabetic form, diminishes 
feminine values and compromises women's uh, ability to function in the culture. Now, if we take the Taoist symbol, which I hope you all recognize, you know, there's a yin and the yang. What's happened is in our Western culture, we have become so uh, oriented because of the alphabet, because of those figures. And what's happened is we've become a yang society. If you go look at Eastern societies, it's a little different. One side without the other side is incomplete. Together, they're strong. And this is my point. We can't have uneven things. So first writing, then the alphabet, upset this balance. And especially in the West, we have a strong yang thrust. Non-literate agricultural societies have tended to be very egalitarian. There, there's an equality between the sexes, which is something that we totally lost. Now, if we move a little farther ahead, we've got Victorian morality, which they tried to, you know, let's straighten things out. Well, of course they straighten things out, but what happened is classes started to be created, and women were just put in the worst position, and they were allowed to, uh, it was so bad that prostitution was allowed. So that's a denigration of women in a way. So we're always working on that patriarchy. Most psychologists reject biological explanations and blame social and cultural conditioning for all this. So just remember, if you have daughters, just remember, you know, keep them aware of this kind of stuff. So the Second World War changed it all. What happened is women went to work doing every job that a man could do. But what happened as soon as the war ended? We we're back to a situation where in the state, women were unlikely to have formal power and representation. In the household, women were more likely to be stuck raising the children. With violence, women were more prone to violence. When it came to paid work, women made less money. Sexuality, women's sexuality is more likely to be treated negatively. And in culture, women are more mis misrepresented in our media, in, in our culture. So a couple of little other sides of that equation, and that's in 2011, a survey by a US-based nonprofit organization that started to look at organizations that had women on the board. And, and organizations that had 19 to 44% women were achieving such gains like 26% more uh, on their investments uh, in these corporations. So we know that women really add to those type of things, and so we're in a transition. So I'll speak about some of the total inequalities that happen, and a perfect example is a, a woman named Lady Astor. She was the heir to the Astor, uh, the Astor, War, Waldorf Astor fortune, and she was the first woman to sit in the British House of Commons. Now she sat across the, the, uh, the floor from Winston Churchill, and what did Winston Churchill have to say on the first day she was there? When you took your seat, I felt a woman had come into my bathroom and I had only a sponge to defend myself. Well, in that kind of world, we've got this other side of the equation that is just being not used. Now, she had a little fun and, and I just love some of the stuff she had to say. She says, uh, I married beneath me. All women do. <laughs> she said, in passing also, I'd like to say the first time Adam had the chance. He laid blame on a woman. And she says, I'm not asking for superiority. We've always had that. All I want is equality. And when you think in Canada that women weren't allowed to vote till 1919, how bizarre is that? So what I'm asking tonight is that what we do is consider some of the other societies that are around. We've got the, the Hopi and the, uh, uh, the Iroquois in North America, Polynesians that really work well together and they have considerable harmony within the sexes. Egalitarianism. <laughs> and we have three minutes for questions. Right. Do you believe in uh, North American society that it's getting better? Oh, absolutely. But by the, same, by the same token, I think it's very denigrating to women still. Women, young women don't understand the liberal times that happened in the 70s. And now they think, like, I know it may sound a little disrespectful, but 
when I was young, if a woman wore underwear outside her clothes, it was not part of the equation. Now, they think that, well, it's just part of life, you know? So, is, is that a good thing or is that not a good thing? Mark. Why should we be inclined to accept your take on the issue being that it's coming from a male? A male. That was a perfect example of what we can do if we work together. It, it means that that yin-yang symbol, there's things that that side has that this side doesn't have. And what it is, is if we bring situations, I love bringing issues like this to the forefront because I am a male and because uh, my best friends are, are female. And I watch what, what happens on a regular basis and I see how men treat women and I see it from a man's perspective, but I also see it from when you have friends that are women, you can emote and empathize with them and, and it really gives you a rounded perspective on, on a much better rounded perspective on, on looking at situations like that. Down the end. Um, yeah, I've got a question for you. Uh, you, you mentioned um, by the time it was uh, 5 AD uh, that there was a, a big shift and it was a man's world. Um, could you touch on what you think was the reason for that shift? But what created that shift from it being you know, a woman's world and then praising and, and, and you know, with women as, as I, would I would suggest to you that what happened over time is men it's not that they weren't always stronger, but just because they had that strength, they had that ability to be able to dominate, and it started to move in that direction. Whereas they used to trust a female. A female has cycles, so they knew when, uh, you know, they knew when uh, to plant. They knew uh, when to when certain things would happen. And and really, if you read a little bit about that time period, men were just freaked right out by by blood and by, you know, where, where are these children coming from? It was a really powerful, uh, it was really powerful against them and they probably, you know, like what are men like, you know, we're, <laughs> crush them, crush them, you know, and, and women just go, oh, he's going to crush me, you know, they, they don't fight back, it's not a, so I think kind of that's what happened over time, so. Hey. Do you believe uh, true equity starts from home, not from society? Like more housework, more childcare help on this? I, I think there has to be a balance in, if you have a relationship and there's a man and a woman, they have to find that balance. There, uh, I came from an era where women stayed home and men went to work, but there's no reason that a man can't stay home. You see Mr. Mom, it, it was movies about it, it was quite funny, but the reality is I grew up with people who, uh, who raised their children because the wife was at work and it worked really well because uh, they instilled different values in their children than uh, a mom would. So, so that's it for tonight. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>